Hi, this is Oksana and welcome to another episode of Easy Exposure, the tutorials about photography. In this episode we will be talking about very important element of photography and this element is light. The ability to see and use light is very important for every photographer. And you can actually train yourself, train your eyes to see the light and you can learn how to use it properly in your photographs. But first, you should know what to look for when you look for light. And in this lesson, we will be talking about main characteristic of light. And I hope this will help you to see the light and to use it in your pictures. So let's get started. It is very important for every photographer to pay attention to light and characteristic it has. I divided the light characteristic into three groups. And the first one is direction of light. You have to pay attention where the light comes from. You can have front lightning, side lightning or back lightning. Here is an example of the front light. The front light is when the light source is positioned behind the photographer and light is shining directly on the subject from the front. In this light most of the scene is well lit and also the type of light helps to eliminate shadows. But it's not always a good thing, because shadows bring a three-dimensional feel to the picture. And in this light, the picture might feel a little bit flat. On the other hand, minimal shadows help to minimize texture and details, which in some cases might be flattering when you're taking a portrait. But the other problem was a front light is that bright front light may cause your subject to squint the eyes. This is another example. In this case we have a back light. So the subject is lit from the back. Back light is good for creating a silhouette, as you can see in this picture. And also it creates kind of like a rim light around the subject. You can see the rim light on the girl's legs and also you can see that there is a little bit light on her face. Which I really like in this picture because it looks mysterious and dramatic. And this is the same scene but I add an extra light to this picture. I add the strobe light which is coming from the side which adds those nice deep shadows and creates the nice dramatic three-dimensional look. But because of its deep shadows it might not be flattering for everybody's portrait and to make it more flattering you need to know how to position it right based on person's features and face shape I will be talking about that in my other tutorials. Of course, when you're using flash or strobe, it's much more easier to position the light on the angle you want it to be. But if you're using available light, let's say if you're using sunlight, then you will have to rotate the person or object towards the light. The second characteristic of the light is degree of diffusion of the light. You can have either hard light or a soft light. This is an example of hard light. As you can see, the shadows are really dark and deep and there is high contrast between light and dark parts of the picture. I think it adds really interesting three-dimensional feel to the picture. And this is the same couple but I was using a soft light in this picture. As you can see, there is almost no shadows on the faces and 
it's kind of flattering the face, like making the skin more glowy and kind of eliminates the details. And subjects are evenly lit by the light. Here are a few situations in which you can get a hard light. For example, like on this picture, you I took uh, outside when the sun was really bright and it was I took this picture around 2 o'clock p.m. In this time the sun is really high in the sky and it creates this hard deep shadows which create a hard light on the subject. This self-portrait I took at home and I was lit just uh, by the floor lamp from the side. And it's also created the hard light as you can see I have a deep dark shadows from one side. Another interesting example. This picture was taken during the golden hour. Golden hour is an hour, one hour before the sunset and also golden hour is one hour after sunrise but this picture was taken before the sunset. As you can see the quality of light is really interesting. You get this beautiful golden glow. Plus the shadows casted on the subject add to more interest to the picture. This is example of hard light created in the studio. For this picture I used strobe together with a reflector and grid on it. In this picture I used also strobe with reflector and grid, but this time I was shooting the picture outside. This is also a good example of side light. As you can see, the light is coming from the side of the subject. That's why another side is in the shadow. Hard side light is great for dramatic portraits like this. Let's take a look on some examples of the soft light and in which situation you can get the soft light. This picture was taken on the cloudy day. As you can see there is almost no shadows. Because the sun didn't fall directly on the subject but had to travel through the clouds, the light becomes diffused and it falls softly on the subject and kind of wraps around the subject. This is another example of the soft light. This picture was taken on the sunny day, but in the shadow. Actually, it was an open shadow. It was casted by the building, but the sky was still above the heads of my subjects. For this picture, I used window light. Soft window light is great for photographing baby. This is an example of soft studio lightening. For this shot I used the strobe with a softbox. The softbox helps soften the light. I positioned the softbox from the side about 45 degrees from the subject. As you can see, by positioning the softbox from the side it still created a nice soft shadow on the side which created this nice three-dimensional feel. The third very important characteristic of the light is color temperature of the light. Some light might be warmer, another light might be cooler. By warmer I mean the light with more yellowish warmer tones and by cooler I mean more Cooler light with bluish tones. Different type of light have a different color temperature. Direct sunlight is always having warmer tones, which is opposite to the light in the shade, which is more on the cooler side. I hope you can see the difference. Color temperature of the light is also different depending on time of the day. In this picture you have a golden hour. Golden hour is one hour before sunset or one hour before, after sunrise. As you can see on this picture you have this nice golden glow. This picture was taken during the dusk 
when the sun went completely down. As you can see, I used the same subject for both pictures, but what a difference between colors of its fur. Also, indoor lights such as tungsten and fluorescent have a different color temperature. With tungsten light you get more yellowish, warmer tones. Fluorescent light is more on the cooler side. There is also difference between uh, different type of studio lights. For example, old-fashioned hot lights will give you more warmer tones than, for example, strobes. As you can see, picture taken with the hot lights looks more vintage than the picture was taken with the strobes. I just want to point out that pictures I showed you in this lesson are not color balanced properly because I wanted to uh, this color cast to be more obvious to you like I wanted to show you that some light is more yellow or some light is more blue but actually when you take in a picture you will have to color balance your picture if you take the picture in the light which gives you too much blue you want to remove this blue or if you take a picture in light which gives you too much yellow you will want to remove the yellow so your picture looks uh, more realistic and the colors in your picture are more identical to the true colors you, you see in your scene and this uh, rule is really important when you, for example, take in the portraits of the people because you want a skin tone look good. Or, for example, if you take a pictures of products uh, for your client and your client won't be happy if there will be, I don't know, white dress which look yellow if he puts the dress somewhere in the magazine and somebody will see this dress, they will expect yellow dress, but actually the dress is why do you know what I mean so in the next lesson we will talk about color balancing how to balance your pictures how to get the true colors to your picture of course there is always exceptions to the rule and sometimes you want a little color cast for some artistic feel but still uh, you should know how to color balance your pictures properly and we will talk about that in the next lesson so let's summarize everything we learned in this lesson. We were talking about very important characteristic of the light and we can divide them into three groups. The first group is uh, the direction of light. You have to pay attention to direction of light and your light can come from the front, from the back or from the side. And the, from the side it doesn't really mean that it can come strictly from the side 90 degrees angle. It can come from here, like, it depends what you're looking for, you can angle your side light. Also, very, another important feature of the light is the degree of diffusion. So you can have a hard light, the light which coming directly on the subject and it creates really dark deep shadows. Or you can have a soft light, which for example comes through the clouds and it's more soft and diffused or soft light can be bounced off something and then go on the subject. In this case you have a scene more lit and more soft. Also another really important uh, characteristic of the light is light color temperature. Depending on the light, different light has a different color temperature. And actually, some light is cool, some light is warm, but some light might be warmer than another, or some light might be cooler than another. And this we will discuss in my other lesson. So I hope this lesson was helpful to you, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye!